All right, this is concept three notes. We're gonna talk through evidence of evolution. So I'm gonna share a brief overview of where we get evidence for all of the stuff we've been teaching you. So evolution is considered to be the unifying theme of biology because it ties together evidence and research from so many different branches of biology. So we're gonna walk through each of these today. So if you're using my Cornell note outlines, go through each and define each of these and then we'll come back and we'll fill in explanations of how they provide evidence um, one by one. So we'll look at paleontology, which is the study of prehistoric life through the fossil record. We'll look at morphology, um, or an, some people refer to it as anatomy, which is just the study of the form of living things. So we'll be looking at structures and similarities there. Biogeography, which is the study of the geographic distribution of plants and animals. Um, Essentially, just think where living things are located. We'll be looking at that. Embryology, which is the study of embryo development. And biochemistry, which is the study of chemical processes and living things. And then we'll also just be looking at some evidence that has just come straight up from direct observation. Just things that can be seen and witnessed um, in our lifetime. So first, paleontology. Fossils are just preserved remains of animals. It could be bones, it could be footprints, imprints or um, on something, it could be feces, any of those things. And what we see in the fossil record is it shows us the history of the types of organisms that have lived on earth, including things that are now extinct. And it, we can also date those and guesstimate ages of those fossils. And so that really helps us give us a timeline of um, kind of how things have happened from an evolutionary perspective. And the really, really important thing that we found are transitional fossils. And these link ancestral species to their descendants. So we can use them to kind of piece together evolutionary history and think, okay, how did we get from this species that's extinct to what we kind of have now that seems like they might have been related? And so an example is Archaeopteryx, which I have um, pictured here. It is a really critical find in the fossil record, and it is a transitional fossil that helps us kind of connect modern day birds and, or what we know to be birds and dinosaurs. That is an example of something that can kind of help us piece together where we were and where we are now. All right, one of my favorite things to look at is morphology, and we look at kind of three different kinds of structures when we're looking at morphology to provide evidence for evolution. First are homologous structures. Homo means same. So these are similar structures and they suggest evidence of common ancestry. So similar structure, but most likely a different function due to the organisms that have them now living in different environments that they have evolved to survive in. Populations of them have evolved to survive in. And homologous structures are the results of divergent evolution. So common ancestor and then branching out from there. So look at this picture. This shows the forelimbs of humans, cats, horses, bats, and dolphins. And what you can see is they all have the same arrangement of those bones. The humerus and then the radius and the ulna, carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. And what you can see comparing these is that even though like the size is maybe different and they're reduced or extended in some, the arrangement is the same. And this is these are considered homologous structures and evidence of divergent evolution. That all five of these species or have some sort of common ancestor that they all diverge from. The more shared structures you have in common, the more closely related you are considered to be from an evolutionary standpoint. Okay, next are vestigial structures. These are structures that some species have that have little or no function, which doesn't make sense from an evolutionary perspective unless they're left over from an ancestor that they were useful for. Um, and thus they could be evidence of divergent evolution. So one of my favorite examples are ostriches, which are just hilarious. And ostriches have wings, but they are flightless. They do not fly. So completely useless wings. And then the last type of structure we see when we're looking at morphology are analogous structures. So these are structures that are similar um, in terms of like how they look, but they evolved independently from in different organisms because they serve similar purposes. So different structurally, but same functionally due to living in similar environments. And so they're the evidence of convergent evolution, of unrelated, but looking similar because you're in the same environment. So they are not related, which is still helpful information to know. 
All right, next we look at the field of biogeography for evidence. And this, again, was I said was the study of where living things were located. And this is really what Darwin was looking at when he was on the Galapagos Islands, and he was analyzing the tortoises there. But it's looking at the distribution of organisms, and what we see is the way that they're lined up really lines up with what we now know about continental drift and Pangaea. And we see that species in nearby geographic areas are often really resembling each other with variation just for their specific environments. So island species are more closely related to nearby mainland species than they necessarily are to species on similar islands on other sides of the world that um, have similar, similar traits. And so this potentially provides evidence of divergent evolution, and that's what Darwin predicted when he analyzed the Galapagos tortoises. And there's also what we found are endemic species, so species that only exist in one geographic region, like the Galapagos Island tortoises, um, are evidence of this as well. Another thing that's pretty interesting is looking at embryos. Um, for instance, if we look at the embryos of vertebrates, we can see early in development how similar they look. Um, and this it could also be evidence of common ancestry and relatedness among vertebrates, the similarities we look at in development. And I have a fun little thing I'll show you about this in class. Okay, this is my favorite because it's just the most straightforward evidence, and I love things that are straightforward. It's looking at biochemistry. So in biochemistry, we're looking at DNA, and we're looking at proteins from different species, and we're comparing them. And what we see is that closely related species have really, really similar DNA sequences. Um, so, for example, look at this set, this gene on a hippopotamus and a humpback whale. A lot of the letters are similar, and we see a couple of differences here. Um, whereas if you maybe compared this gene on a hippo compared to a bacteria, these would be really, really different. So the more you have in common on your DNA, the more closely related you are. Pseudogenes also provide evidence of divergent evolution. And pseudogenes are non-functional genes. I like to think of them as your vestigial structures of your DNA. So they're not useful for you. They don't necessarily code for any proteins or traits that you have, but you just have them. So potentially they're left over from an ancestor you diverge from. And last but not least is evidence from direct observation. So microevolution that has been directly observed due to occurring in populations with really short life cycles that reproduce quickly. So humans, we live a long time and we don't reproduce a lot. So you basically can't find anything out from looking at us. But things like bacteria or fruit flies that reproduce really quickly and they reproduce a lot and then they live really short lives, we can see evolution happening in our lifetime. And a couple of examples are the peppered moss which is a really big example from the Industrial Revolution, which was not too long ago. Um, mosquitoes that are resistant to pesticides like DDT that, um, that have been that have evolved. And then also MRSA, which is a type of antibiotic-resistant bacteria that has evolved. Um, antibiotic resistance is a great example of evolution in our lifetime. And that is your overview of evidence of evolution.